Remember when you were four years old and you used to scribble all over the place? On paper, on tables, maybe even on the walls? Or were you more of a Lego person, building castles and forts and whatever else your imagination could think of? Maybe you were one of those kids who did both, like me and many other kids. When I was younger, I used to love to paint and draw and splash color on everything and anything. But I also love to play with Legos and mechanic sets and science kits with magnifying glasses and those super cool science goggles. Even now, I'm an avid painter and creative, but I've also managed to evolve into a total physics nerd. And now that I've gained all of 15 years on this wonderful planet, all of the neighborhood aunties and uncles have begun to ask me that one question that is the bane of every teenager's existence. What do you want to be when you grow up? And they usually follow up by listing out all of the possible combinations of classes you can take your junior and senior year of high school. There's science or commerce, maybe even humanities or the arts. But not one person mentions the possibility of taking both science and the arts. The question is always science or the arts. The more I started to think about this divide, the more I started to wonder why it even exists in the first place. If we start digging through history, we can date this issue all the way back to Aristotle in the Nicomachean Ethics. In this book, Aristotle classifies knowledge into three basic types. The first being episteme, which often translates to scientific knowledge. The second, techne, which means craftsmanship and the arts. And finally, phronesis, or practical wisdom. Let's leave the third one aside for now. During Aristotle's time, the divide between episteme and techne wasn't as grave as it is today. For techne didn't necessarily mean the fine arts, but rather it encompassed me the mechanical arts, artisanal practices, and yes, okay, the fine arts too. However, the distinction made between episteme and techne has led to a much greater divide as time has passed. Even as we fast forward to the time of the Renaissance, the divide is still quite blurry. In fact, it might have been the golden age for science and art to complement each other. With great thinkers like Leonardo da Vinci, Galileo Galilei, and Filippo Brunelleschi, art and science coexisted in harmony. Da Vinci was an astronomer, biologist, engineer, painter, and a sculptor. His notebooks were filled with pages and pages of scientific observations, and almost all of them are accompanied by vivid sketches. And in his artwork, he used the tools of anatomy to enhance them to a level which is considered revolutionary even to this day. Now for Galileo. You may imagine him sitting there by his telescope, scribbling down scientific observations and calculations, but this couldn't be farther from the truth. Oh no. Galileo was an artist, and at one point, he was even an art instructor. He was fascinated by how three-dimensional objects could be portrayed on two-dimensional planes, and the contrast between light and dark. He used this artistic understanding to overturn a 2,000-year-old notion that the surface of the moon is smooth by illustrating the surface in great detail with watercolors, merely by interpreting the vague shadows cast. You probably haven't heard of Filippo Brunelleschi before today, but his is a name to remember. He was the first to observe and record one-point linear perspective, an artistic phenomenon that had puzzled people for ages. But he didn't stop there, oh no. He used mathematics to calculate the exact scale to create paintings that look undeniably realistic. 
no easy feat. We can't truly see a divide until we move past the Industrial Revolution and into the 1930s. It was at this point that the word technology had began to be used in the everyday vernacular. Up until this point, art and applied science went hand in hand. But with the introduction of this one word, the social order of the industrial society was legitimized. Now, when someone said a man of science, the narrative moved from those such as Galileo and da Vinci to someone who spent all day with machines. The fine arts, as they are now called, were heavily discluded from the discourse of industrialism because with the obsession with materialism and consumerism, the arts were often seen as impractical and unnecessary as far as the movement was concerned. This narrative still persists into modern times. As far as recent history is concerned, the scientific and artistic minds are two completely different things. However, when we really think about it, they aren't as different as they may seem. When we break it down to the very core, we arrive at the questions, what is the purpose of science and what is the purpose of art? The answer seems quite obvious. The purpose of both art and science is to gain a better understanding of the world around us. Scientists do this with the scientific method, close observation, and with the help of mathematics. Artists do the exact same thing with paint and instruments and movement. Both art and science require open-mindedness, free and expansive thinking, and a burning passion for new ideas. In a certain sense, art and science complete each other. Studies have shown that with science, it can be difficult to break free from convention and gain new insight. And with art, it can be challenging to find new ways to communicate ideas visually. When we combine the two, we get a perfect symphony. Look at all of the great thinkers and innovators. Steve Jobs went to university and studied literature, poetry, and calligraphy. Yet he became the founder and CEO of Apple, one of the best known technology companies today. Albert Einstein, one of the most infamous theoretical physicists to have ever lived, often turned to his piano to solve problems when he hit a roadblock in his work. And even when we look at Mark Zuckerberg, we can see that Facebook was largely successful not only because of the technology behind it, but because of the skillfully designed interface, requiring design principles and a keen eye for aesthetics. Even when we turn to the field of psychology for answers, the results tell us the same thing. After much research, psychologists have narrowed down thinking styles into two main groups, convergent and divergent, with the first putting emphasis on analytical and deductive reasoning, and the second on spontaneous and free thinking. Which one do you think is the scientist and which one is the artist? If you're like most people, you would say that the analytical thinker is definitely the scientist and the artist is the spontaneous one. If you agree, you may be shocked to find out that in 2011, a group of undergraduate students, both art and science majors in the United Kingdom, were tested on their convergent and divergent thinking skills. The study found no difference in the abilities in either group of students. And in fact, the best performances were often from those students who were both convergent and divergent thinkers. If combining science and the arts is so beneficial, then why is it that they are still taught separately today? A large part of it has to do with our social and cultural norms. With TV shows and popular media often portraying scientists as these nerds without a single creative bone in their body, and artists as these eccentric characters that live in their own world, these narratives have been deeply ingrained in our collective conscience. The other part of it has to do with administrative convenience. For years and years, these subjects have been, taught, have been treated as polar opposites by educational institutions which are often set up with frameworks to teach these subjects separately. But not all hope is lost. Several institutions have been working together to break the boundaries that have restricted the overlap of art and science for far too long. Take the Rhode Island School of Design, for example. The university is working along with Brown University and the University of Rhode Island to develop new ways to visualize oceanic data to better understand marine life. 
or the collaboration between the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and Berkeley College to develop new technologies to improve the health of citizens by exploring the impacts of music on brain functions, such as sleep, anxiety, and stress. As cliche as it may sound, when we combine art and science, the possibilities are endless. As we can see, when we allow ourselves to break free from the narrative that has been set up over the past century, there is a whole world of creativity and innovation out there. Leonardo da Vinci once said, to develop a complete mind, study the science of art, study the art of science. Understand that everything connects to everything else. So aunties and uncles, next time you ask me what I want to do, here's your answer. I will not choose between art and science. I will choose both art and science. Thank you.